Hi everyone, this is Jason. And I'm Lorraine. And this is the Sow the Land podcast. And in today's podcast, uh, we're going to be talking about... How did we downsize? Yeah. How did we get rid of all of our stuff? Yeah, just kind of um, how did we live, how are we living minimally? Right. 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 Because that's a question I think a lot of people have is how did you move, um, you know, and, and get rid of a lot of your belongings and move into a tinier house? So we're going to be talking about that today in this episode in our podcast. But first, let's talk about what we've been up to for the week. Yeah. So this week we had family over. Lorraine's parents were over. My parents are here. Right. <laughs> and we're so thankful to have them here and to have their help around the homestead. And they're so happy to help too. And just, you know, spend time with Penelope and to spend time yes. with us as well. So it's, it's wonderful to have them here. Yeah. I think, uh, it's been about what, what a few months since we last seen them. In... When did we see them last? Well, we were out in California in, in... That's right. It's been a few months. So we... No, November? We were... Yeah. Around there? No, it was, it was September. Okay, September. For Baker Creek. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but they haven't been out here for... They both together yeah. have not been out here since the year we moved. Yeah, so almost, that's almost four years now. Right. We moved out yeah. here in 2016 and they came just a few months afterwards just to kind of see where we moved to. And then they haven't really been back since. And so we've done a lot to our property, our homestead. And so I'm pretty sure they were all surprised to see all of the improvements and the growth that we've, that yeah. we've done here. Because nothing was here. Not even a garden was here when they were here. Like they we had, Yeah. Yeah. They, we were only here like a couple months maybe. And then they came over. But, um, but yeah, it's nice to have them over and just kind of a second pair of hands and just kind of help us out doing little projects and try to complete projects, winter projects. So it's pretty nice. Yeah, that's great. And uh, you are finished with the pig port. Yes, well, yeah, just about. I mean, I'm pretty much done with it. Um, so if you've been following along on our YouTube channel, for those of you who are listening just strictly on the podcast, um, our, on our YouTube channel, Jason has been building a pig shelter. Are we calling it the pig port? Yeah, it's a, it's really a greenhouse slash pig shelter <laughs> slash it's like a compost corner that I want to turn it into with the pigs. And I've been working on that pretty much since, I don't know, the fall time. And uh, we're going to be getting a couple pigs soon. So I wanted to get that buttoned up and get it done. And now that your dad's here to help me out with that, uh, we were able to pretty much complete it. So, and I'm filming it at the same time. So stay tuned for, for more video and uh, footage of that, that build. I've just been busy cooking and um, kind of just enjoying my parents, really. Um, it's after the holidays. We're just kind of getting over that. I mean, we've had a really nice quiet Christmas here. Yeah. Um, with just us three. And um, it was really nice to not have to go anywhere and hustle and bustle with an in traffic or anything like that. And that was nice. Right. And it's just, I guess, getting get, kind of getting back into the routine after the holidays. You know, you know how it is. Just uh, getting back to it and just, just getting ready for spring, right. really. Yeah. And you've been busy making more products for our store. We have a store downtown Asheville, North Carolina. And... Uh, we have our, our products there in that store and you've been busy making more product there. Yeah. I mean, things are, things are good there. Yeah. Uh, we've had that store for over a year now and things are, are looking good in that store. Um, we get a lot of people who have subscribed to our YouTube channel, come through town and, and, uh, it's a great meeting point. Yeah. yeah. Just kind of hang out there and, and we meet a lot of people that follow us on YouTube, uh, at our shop at space. And, um, so it's, it's pretty nice to have. Yeah, it's almost like we can't keep up. <laughs> no, we can't. But we're, we're trying. We're, we're trying to update it more and more every single day. Right. And another thing that we have been working on is cleaning out our office. We have an office space or an, a bedroom that we use as an office. And yeah. it's gotten cluttered. And we have a really hard time keeping it just very minimal and and tidy because it is a multi-purpose room. It is like our, we don't really have a garage 
here on the we don't have a garage. <laughs> so it's like a garage it's the shipping and packing room for all of the um things that we sell on our website yeah. it's the home homeschool storage room where we put all of our homeschool books when we're not using them and it's also your your editing room sometimes yep it's editing filming we keep all our like filming equipment in film there equipment. We, our computers in there and so it's yeah it's pretty crowded in there i mean it's the only space we have so it's the new year and we've we we we're starting to go through our things and i don't know maybe it's early spring cleaning but yeah. we're starting to go through our things and um almost reassessing, reassessing. Of the stuff that we have yeah. in there and figuring out like how can we improve on this space because it really does need improvement a little bit more organization do we need to get rid of stuff like what stuff have have we held on to that we don't really need anymore or we haven't used and so we've been trying to work through that these last couple weeks um and trying to get that space organized yeah which leads us into our topic how did we downsize? And, and like I said earlier, uh, a lot of people ask us that question because they struggle with that. And that's something that I think every family struggles with is like, how do you downsize? How do you make the call of, of getting rid of things uh, that you're not sure if you're going to need it or you, if you, you know, if you, I don't know what am I trying to say. It, it's just how do you how do you get rid of it? How do you get rid how of it? How do you get rid of stuff? Like it's so easy to accumulate stuff. Yes. So how do you get to a point where you're like, oh, I just don't need this stuff. I want to get rid of it. But what stuff do I get rid of? And I think the <laughs> the first thing and the only thing we can do is just share how we did it. Yes. Back. Okay. So just to give you before we start though, I do want to give you a backstory for those of you who are just new to our channel or you just stumbled ac across this podcast. Is we used to live in Southern California, in the city, um, maybe suburbia, and we had a, a large three bedroom house with a separate office. So maybe four bedrooms, you could say, and two living rooms and a nice large size kitchen with plenty of storage space in the kitchen. And yeah. it was just a large home. I think it was about 2000 square feet. It was a larger home than what we have now. Almost double the, double the size that we have now. And uh, we had every room filled with things we had a living room uh we had a tv room yeah we had a dining room yeah um and we probably only used two of those rooms <laughs> yeah like, We're just, it was more of like a sitting room i guess yeah it was, it was a know. formal it was a formal uh living room that i think we yeah. call it and each room had its own furniture yeah. had its own couches had right. its own lamps and tables and uh, coffee tables and chairs and picture frames on the wall yeah and so what we moved to now we we decided we were going to be a homesteading family and we were going to move across the country to north carolina where we're at now and we have a much much smaller home we actually live in a mobile home and it's half the size maybe a little yeah. bit smaller than half it's the about size. a thousand square feet yeah it's a single wide mobile home and we don't have a garage. We had a garage in our yes. our other place with us, and we also had like shed, a shed, and we had plenty of plenty of space to yeah, sprawl out. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have no garage, and uh, we're about half less than half the size that we were in California. So we had to downsize a lot. We had to get rid of a lot of our possessions in order to make this um, transformation or. To make to make this new move into homesteading. So I think it was uh, the, this idea of we wanted to homestead and buy a little bit of land and, and live off the land and and maybe farm. Um, and still at that point, uh, living in California, we really didn't know what it was going to look like, how our life was going to look like. But we knew we wanted these certain things, and and we had these certain values that we that we had for for our family and the way we wanted to live. And so I think that drove us to live more minimally. We were always collectors of things. Yes. I think. <laughs> we were always collectors of things. Like I think since the day we met each other, 
Yes. We were always collectors. Like before we got married, we were even yeah. collectors of antiques and we, vintage. Yeah. We love going to flea markets. Oh, yeah. We love going to yard sales. Yes. Going to thrift stores. Oh, yep. Um, vintage stores. Vintage clothing yes. stores for me. <laughs> Yeah. So. And we collected it all. I had a collection of vintage 1950s bathing suits. And I I mean, I wore some of them, but mostly you just kind of collect them and you hang on to them. And I don't know, maybe you bring them out every now and then. Just look at them. Yeah. <laughs> that, and then I had vintage hats and you had vintage ties and... Another thing you collected was posters, movie posters. Yeah, I had old like Spanish uh, movie posters from like the 30s and 40s. Yeah. Uh, I had a whole like mess of them. And um, along with, you know, I, have, I also have records. Yeah, records. Uh, Your record collection was huge. It was huge at one point. Yeah. It's, it was a lot more than what I have currently. You know, so we collected things and just like little knickknack things that we thought were, were cool, yeah. you know, thought looked cool and, and, and stuff that we wanted in our home and on, on shelves and and it just accumulated over time, uh, you know, after we were married and we had our own home and it just, it just, uh, we had a house filled <laughs> uh, with collections. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we thought it was decor. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, it was. Yeah, in some way it was decor. But we didn't, there was a lot of things that we did collect that just sat in boxes put away in closets. Yes, and yeah. we, we just bought it because either maybe it was on a good price, it was a good, we found it, at, maybe we found it at a flea market and it was a, Thought it, it looked cool. Thought it looked cool <laughs> and uh, maybe I'll buy it and just keep it. But then nobody ever saw it because it was just in a box yeah. somewhere and I never even knew, maybe I forget about it, I even had it. Right. Uh, and it was just sitting in the garage or something in a box. Um, so, you know, that's again, that's a little bit of backstory of, of the stuff that we had and what we would collect. Um, but then, you know, after we wanted to live this homestead life, uh, we said, we need to start getting rid of stuff, I think. Because we can't take it all with us. Like if we're, I mean, at that point, we didn't really know like where we were going to end up homesteading, but we were like, what if, what if we moved out of the country or what if we moved a couple states away? Are we going to take all this stuff yeah. with us? Or, or even we, do we, we thought it? about living in a, like a really tiny home, like 400, right. 300 square feet or we something. We were considering that. Yeah. Or even in a yurt. Like, where's so, this stuff gonna go? <laughs> yeah, so we thought, well, if we're gonna go do this life and possibly maybe living in a small home or maybe even an RV, like, we cannot take all this stuff with us. And so we need to start paring down if, if we're gonna really do this. And it, it still, I think it was like a a, a, a joke, kind of, like, like slowly it was building up like oh well if we're gonna go live off the land somewhere we're not gonna need all these posters that i collect right, <laughs> <laughs> right. so then we started actively going around the house and just saying well i think we could get rid of this now you know we've had it for a long time and yeah you know maybe it's just been in a box and i think we could get rid of that so it was just kind of like things that we saw and we knew we had and um, then we just made the decision like, okay, we'll, we'll either sell it or uh, gift it to a friend or, or give it a goodwill. It was a slow process of, it, that's how it started, of just like slowly baby steps of getting rid of our things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think at that point, it kind of just went in waves. Like, it's almost like when you start getting rid of stuff, it's it picks up momentum at first it, you can, it seems like super slow and super like painful it's it seems painful to get rid of stuff <laughs> it was yeah <laughs> it seemed like it at the moment yeah at the at the moment at the very beginning it seems so painful like oh my gosh i can't get rid of this stuff like, because I, do you know how much this thing is worth on ebay or do yeah. you know how much i paid for this or yeah or like look at cool this this, this is. is so cool yeah. like like you know, I love painful. this thing, <laughs> you know, and so, yeah, it was painful. So that was like the beginning, but like, it's almost like the more you talk about it and the more you start doing it, it just kind of picks up momentum, like speed. Yeah. And you're just like, you really get into it. And also, we also had to have 
a goal in mind that we wanted way more than these things. Like we wanted to homestead. We wanted that way more than the possessions that we had that were just taking up space in our house. And that was, um, it was hindering us from taking the next step into homesteading. And that was a block that we had to get over. And we knew that if once we got rid of these things, we could make it there. So we wanted homesteading more. So that was like a drive for us. Yeah, it was almost like, well, what's the big picture here? Yeah. You know, what, what's our ultimate goal? Was to go find land and go live off the land as much as we can, grow our own food, like like find more land somewhere, um, and just trying to live more minimally and intentionally. And so that was the ultimate goal and that was the driving force of getting rid of our things right or there's plan b we can stay here and be buried in all of our stuff <laughs> <laughs> right and so like our stuff was going to prevent us from going to go live our dream yeah and so okay so what we're saying is it didn't happen all in one day we didn't get rid of all of our things in one day or one hour it was like i said like or like you said like it came in waves or in circles. So we would decide, okay, the posters have to go today. And then maybe, I don't know, we just, I don't know, a month later or a day later or whenever later, uh, we made another choice to kind of look around again. Okay, fine, we don't, I don't need like 20 bathing suits from the 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could get rid of those, you know? And so like every day we made progress on this goal that we had to get over this stumbling block to get to our to get to our goal. If you were to if we were to t time it and to see how long it took us to get rid of stuff from the time we kind of started talking about homesteading to the time we actually left California, I think it was about five or six years from where we actually got to a point where like okay we got rid of enough stuff um, that we could maybe put in a storage or we were happy with the stuff that we had left over um, that we could that could uh, help us as we make this move. Um, but, you know, how, how do you get rid of all this stuff? You know, I think you just have to look and see, like, does it matter? Right. Like, ultimately. Ultimately. Like, does, does it matter? Do the, does this stuff that we have matter? Like, like if it was gone one day. Like, am I going to die <laughs> if I don't have these Spanish movie posters from the 1930s? <laughs> am I, is my life going to end if these are out of my life right now? Yeah. <laughs> like, like it could be like that dramatic of like, <laughs> do I need to get, do I need to keep this stuff? Is, and also, is it serving a purpose? as well like is this going to help us in our future goal like our future goal was to homestead whatever your future goal is ask is this if i take this on to my next uh goal you know to the next place where i want to be is it going to help us in right. any way yeah. i had i mean i most of you know i used to work in the fashion industry when i lived in california i had boxes and boxes of clothes with with uh with the with the price tag still on them just because, you know, I used to get clothes and, um, and I had a, also my collection of vintage clothes. And one thing that we asked ourselves is like, I don't want to be the best dressed farmer out there like <laughs> in my high heels and my fancy wool coats. Like I, I, I don't want to be that, that I kind of felt like that's not who I want to be. Like we're going into this yeah. new lifestyle. Or all those ties that I would wear, or like I had, <laughs> yeah. like the vintage ties. Like, I, am I going to be wearing a t some ties while I <laughs> go shovel compost? Right. <laughs> or the 1940s rayon shirt that had, would look really cool. Yeah. Like, we had some cool stuff. Yeah. But like, was it going to help us in our, our next lifestyle that we're planning on living? Like, no. We're going to be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, this three-piece suit that I had, like, I kind of missed that suit, but no, <laughs> no, but like, you know, yeah, these things we're not going to wear, like when we farm, right. like when we're on the land, like this, it's not, we're not going to like, it's just a totally different thing that we're going to live. Yeah. Way of life. 
And yeah. so we're not going to need these things. Now, is there anything that you got rid of that you do miss? Do you feel that out of all the stuff that we got rid of, you know, all of our stuff, right? Did, is there anything that you do say that nowadays? Like, gosh, I got rid of that and I should have kept, I should have hung on to it. No, no, not a, I don't even like, I don't think I even know what we got rid of. Right. Actually. Like, like specific things. Right. Like, I mean, some things. Yeah. Right. But like everything, I couldn't even tell you. We couldn't even remember all what, of what the things. Of, yeah. I mean, it's been four years since we've moved, but like, yeah, we, we couldn't tell you all of the things, specific things that we had in that home that just filled every room. Another good helpful tip, and this is along the same lines here, is put it in a box. You were saying that earlier. Put it in a box and seal the box and put it away in a room. <laughs> and if you don't remember what's in that box, <laughs> yeah, like, you need to get rid of like, that box. Like six months later, go back to that box. Yeah. And, and say like, did I really miss this thing? Right. Did I need it? Yeah. For... Like, like say if you're on the fence, if you're on the fence of like, yeah. I don't know if I should get rid of this thing. I really like this thing. Like, uh, I don't know. It's hard for me to get rid of it. What do I do with it? So yeah, put it in a box, mm -hmm. wait six months. If you don't remember what's inside, yeah. then, then you're really in trouble. Yeah. If you don't, yeah. If, if you don't remember, if you never missed it, yeah, maybe you don't know what's inside. Yeah. Maybe it's time to get rid of that box. Right. We get some questions sometimes. What do I do with all of my things? Well, the, what we did with our things is we either, like if it was valuable, we sold some things on eBay only because we, we were, we wanted to get out of debt. Um, so we had a few things that we wanted to pay off before we moved into the next um, journey, which was our homesteading journey. So we, if it was, you know, obviously a collectible or rare item, we sold it on eBay, but, or, or if it was, um, still in really good condition, we recommend gifting it to another family in need. Now I know that I had several, um, sets of pots and pans. I don't know why, <laughs> but I did. And, and sets of dishes as well. And I remember we, we ended up gifting it to another family who had, um, this couple who had just started a family and um, she needed some pots and pans. And it was a huge blessing to her to have like really nice pots and pans. And we just, we only kept what, you know, what we needed. And so you can, you can sell it uh, and to pay off some debt or you can gift it to another family or donate it to Goodwill. Yeah, just give it away. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there's also like Craigslist. There's a Facebook marketplace right. that you can put stuff on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, give it to Google, like call your friends and say, hey, I got, I'm getting rid of stuff. You know, if you want any of this stuff, I mean, that's that would be an easy way to go. So you don't have to take it anywhere right. or you don't have to like put it on online yeah. and figure out a price. You have to ask yourself, is it worth my time to start listing it on these marketplaces? Because yeah. I've had some, some friends tell me, oh, I'm trying to sell this or that on the Facebook marketplace and they ask for so much money, but like, I feel like at some point, just give it away. Yeah. <laughs> just get, it's not worth your time. Right. Um, and it's not worth haggling money over, just gift it. Right. Like, I feel like that's the easiest one. And then of course, if nobody wants it, then give it a good one. <laughs> yeah. Somebody will find it and repurpose it. But, but, um, you know, I think gift it. I think that's a, a thing that I want to, that I want to share also with, with, with hoarding too many possessions is, is you're, you're keeping a lot for yourself. And in turn, you're not really turning around and, and gifting it to other people, which I think is what we're supposed to do when you've been blessed with an abundance of things like pots and pans or, or, or sets of dishes, or maybe you own five coats and you don't really need five coats. You just need one coat that does all the, all the jobs. Turn around and bless another family who would benefit from that. I think the big thing is look at the big picture. Like you have to really, you have to want to get rid of stuff. First of all, yeah. if you don't want to get rid of stuff, it's going to be, if you're like you're fighting it, like it's gonna be very, very difficult to get rid of stuff. Like you have to really want to do it. I really do think it, it's it can be addictive. 
like getting rid of stuff. Oh, getting rid of stuff. Well, well the other way too. The other way too, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other way too. But, but we did find that it was addicting, getting rid of stuff. So when we took a look around in our house and we saw, okay, well, maybe we can get rid of that. And then it started to become addicting for us. We would look around, what else can we get rid of? Especially when you're blessing another family, like, oh, you really liked those pots of What else do I have that you can yeah. that you want? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a weird like a mental mental thing. It's almost like a mental relief, like you, like you just kind of feel like a huge weight has been lifted off of your shoulders. It's a real it's yes. it's a real feeling when you get rid of things. I owned a lot of clothes when I lived in California. <laughs> a lot of clothes, and you know what was funny? I never had a thing to wear. Every time we had to go somewhere, I would be like, oh, I have nothing to wear, which was something I always said. But then when we downsized, I like, I got rid of a lot of clothes. Like I kept stuff, the stuff I had in California was a lot of dry cleanable clothes. It was just designer clothing. And I also had vintage clothes too, but um, most of it was dry clean only. And I knew coming here, we wanted to live a very simple lifestyle. Um, I just wanted like cottons and like thrift store clothes where I could just throw them in the washer. And if it got beat up in the garden, I could just, you know, get, use it as a rag later or whatever. Um, but now that I own less pieces of clothing, I never have that problem of, oh, I have nothing to wear. Like this is all I have to wear. Like maybe a few <laughs> dresses and, and, a, and maybe like, like maybe two or three pairs of jeans. That's all I have. So right, I don't really, right. I can't say, oh, I have nothing to wear. Cause I don't know. It's just like a mentality. I mean, even though really I have nothing to wear, but I, I never catch myself saying that now. Like, mm. oh, I have nothing to wear. I mean, unless we get invited to like a wedding or something, yeah. <laughs> which we haven't yet, but right. <laughs> but then I would really have nothing to wear. But like, you know, I, it's it's a weird, yeah. it's weird. Right. <laughs> you have less stuff. To choose from. I have less yeah. options. There, yeah, there you I go. think that's there the thing. Go. That's, yep. I kind of like that. I, ha I don't have any, you I don't have, have don't have too many options. Yeah. And then your, just... your mind just goes like nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of the quotes that I hung on to during that time period when we were like getting rid of massive amounts of possessions was um, this quote that I read. I, I don't know who said the quote, but um, it says, possessions don't make you rich, they make you possessive. And I thought that was so true because here we were sitting in this large home and we had all these things that surrounded us and we didn't, we didn't feel rich. And honestly, moving here with like hardly anything. I remember we had, um, when we first moved in and we had, we really had nothing. And when we got, we were able to buy our washer and dryer. And we had been without for a little while when we moved here. I was so thankful, like yes. incredibly thankful that we had this washer and dryer. And I hadn't felt that this overwhelming sense of um, gratitude and um, just like overwhelming thankfulness that like, I am so thankful for this. And I think that's a wonderful place to be. And I think almost that's where like God wants us to be is, is like, wow, thank you for this. But like when you're surrounded with so many things, it's kind of hard to be really thankful for just like a small cup of tea because you're just, it, it's just like you're, you're consumed, you know, with, you're just crowded. I kind of feel like you're, when you're physically crowded, you're also mentally crowded. And when we found that we came here and we live with less, we're able to see a little bit clearer when we have something nice as simple as a cup of tea or a brand new washer and dryer, which I know anybody would be thankful for, but, right. but, or, or something as simple as like, well, when we first moved here, we were, we, we, we got rid of our mattress. Yes. We got rid of our bed, like bed frame, like every, everything. And so when we moved here, all we had was a blow up mattress. We slept on that for a very long time. <laughs> I think it was almost a year that was, we slept on yeah. the blow up mattress. Yeah. And so, when we finally broke down and bought a mattress. I think it was a gift. It was a gift. It was a gift. It was a gift, okay. <laughs> so we never gift. even did that, but. Right. Um, <laughs> and we might still be on that blow up mattress. No. We, no, but, um, <laughs> you know, like just, just a mattress, like just. 
a bed. I was so like, blown away. Like it was crazy. my it was my birthday present. That's why I remembered it was a gift. Okay. Because it was my birthday present from your mom, and um, I, I just remember being incredibly thankful to sleep on a real mattress. Like yes. Like little things, like you know, little things. Yeah, things that we would probably take for granted. Right. Having a, a house filled with things yeah. that we just these are ours. We just expect that they're ours, but then coming here and not having for a while, and then you you get that little thing, and you're like, wow, I'm really thankful for that. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. I think we need to keep in mind, though, getting rid of stuff is a never-ending cycle. It is. Never-ending. Like, you will always... Sometimes you accumulate like when we we still have this issue like you know maybe sometimes we accumulate some stuff like over the years since we've been here and we need to re go back to that we need to reassess it and that's what we're doing now with our office is we're reassessing the stuff that we accumulated in the last four years uh, that we have in our office and do we really need maybe this stuff? we haven't used it if we haven't used it then it's time to get rid of it yeah and just it's never ending. And that's the thing, like, it's not like you get rid of stuff and you're like, okay, I did that, yeah. we're good. Um, no, it's not no. a one-time thing. It's, it's every a day, constant cycle. Everyday choices, too. Everyday choices. What are we going to bring into this house? We're very careful about that. That's like a whole nother topic, yes. maybe another podcast series on living minimalistically um, in, a, in a smaller home. Like, we can't, we have to be very careful what we bring into our house or what we accept from people <laughs> as right. gifts because we don't have room for it. But, okay. um, but yeah, like it's a cycle to go through your things, take an inventory of your things and hold it in your hands and ask yourself, do I really need this? Is this serving a purpose? Does it make me happy? Does it make me happy? <laughs> I mean, most people will say, yes, it does make me happy. I like looking at this. So that also, really quick, I know we want to end this podcast for, for time's sake, but I do want to point out a lot of questions that we get is, what about uh, memorabilia, like, um, not memorabilia, but like memories, such as like photographs um, or things that, that been passed down have to been you, maybe. Down, maybe. So I want to say what we did with, with photos is um, when we first started trying to pack them up for moving, we put them in there. We still, they were still in their picture frames and we wrapped them in newspaper and we put them in boxes, but that really took up a lot of space. And we're talking about, we don't have a lot of space here. So what we did, what we found, what worked for us was we took them out of the frames because those can be replaced. So uh, you wanna take your things that cannot be replaced like photographs and then we put them into plastic storage containers and that's where they sit. That's the best uh, solution we have for what, you know, yeah. for, fo for photographs. Um, so they're just in like a plastic storage container with a lid and an airtight lid and they're just in our, in our office. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but nowadays, those are the olden times. <laughs> right, oh right. <laughs> but nowadays, no one prints out their photos, right. you know, like, they have them on their phone or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I, maybe it's a little bit more easier, but yeah, it's just like the older photos. Right, and then the like, older photos. Yeah. That's what we mean. And then, you know, it, it, if you have stuff that has been passed down to you and it really is just something you cherish and like, yeah, don't, don't get rid of it. Right, exactly. You know, like, like, don't get rid of that. Like, you know, if it means a lot to you, like, yeah, of course, keep it. Find a home for it, though. That's right. important. Find a home for it. Don't just put it in a box and put it away. Yeah. And forget about it. Right. Like, I think it's important to not do that. Right. You know, put it in your home, put it on a shelf, whatever it is, um, and find a home for it. So that's what we did as a family to downsize and move into such a smaller space into our homesteading lifestyle and journey. And um, like we said, it was just basically repeating in waves or in circles and asking ourselves, do we really need this? And what do we do with it? Can we bless another family? Can we turn it around and sell it and get help get out of debt or pay off some bills? And that's how we did it. Yeah, and it's just everyday choices that we make on how to keep at it and keep doing it. But uh, I think that's the end of this podcast. 
We want to thank you guys for listening. Yeah, and watching us on YouTube. Again, you could listen to this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, all the podcast apps. And we also have been putting it on our Land YouTube channel. But uh, we appreciate you guys listening. And watching. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.